Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacy Flowers and I am a student of Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University and on a journey to become 100% debt free. I'm currently on baby step number two to repay all of my debts. My current debt is nearly $200,000. I work part time for myself bringing in an income of about $2,000 a month and in this video I am going to go over my October budget report card. So if you are interested in that, please keep watching. I'm excited for this month's budget report card because I do have good things to report and that just makes me so stinking happy. So let's get into the reflection questions. I always like to reflect at the beginning of my budget report cards because this journey for me is more than just dollars and cents. So This month I am grateful for my income. Um, I worked uh, my part-time hours this month and I was able to double double plus my income, my net take home income. And that is an amazing feeling to be able to um, honor my original decisions, prioritize my mental and emotional health and still be able to earn money. Um, that is just a very lovely salary to earn. I'm also really excited because this so Every, and so the way that I do my, and people ask me this question about my business income. So the way that I do my business income is I'm never work. The month that I'm in is not the month that I spend in terms of my business income. So for example, all of the money that I earned in the month of October is going to be spent in the month of November. So I'm always like using the money in the following month. And so, um, November is actually the first month of the second year of me being on the Financial Peace University journey and it is amazing to see the contrast between my first month last year in 2017 in October like mid late October when I actually got started to you know the income that I earned this October just one year later so I'm so super grateful for my income it is phenomenal to to see that number increasing. The second thing that I'm grateful for is my mental health. I feel so strong. I guess I could definitely pick this up so I could look at you guys. I feel so strong mentally. Um, I feel really, really secure emotionally. I just feel, you know, I just feel really, really good. And I think that it took a long time to get to this place where just mentally, emotionally, psychologically, things were just very clear and I felt just very, very strong. So I'm super grateful for that. And then the third thing that I'm grateful for is my emergency fund. I had made mention in the previous video that um, I was going to take, if I had extra money left over in my checking account from the previous month, I was going to take that and bring my emergency fund up. I'm super grateful that now my emergency fund is at $1,000 because that allows me to be able to go into the second year on the Dave Ramsey plan with a fully funded emergency fund. It's an incredible feeling. Um, I'm learning a lot about saving. I'm not naturally a saver. Dave Ramsey talks about there are two types of people like savers and spenders and I'm definitely a nerd spender. And for that reason, savings just has never been a priority. And I talk in other videos about the issue that I had with it. And it's, it feels really good to be overcoming that issue and seeing it reflected in the numbers that I have in my bank account because it does feel really good to log into my bank account and see that there's a balance of $1,000 rather than seeing my account overdrawn by, I don't think I've ever overdrawn by a thousand, but you know, overdrawn by a couple hundred dollars. It's just an amazing feeling. So those are the three things that I'm grateful for this year. What worked this month is getting paid once a month. That has been the most awesome thing in all the land. Dave Ramsey talks about how people who are on the journey and you're a single person, you suffer from something potentially um, called time fatigue because you're the person who's responsible for everything. So for example, when you are reducing your expenses and you're cutting out some of the conveniences like uh, getting lunch in the cafeteria versus packing your own lunch, cleaning your own home versus having a housekeeper, whatever, whatever ways you reduce your expenses. Um, all of those tasks where you used to uh, outsource them to conveniences, you know, you now have to take care of. And oftentimes what single people experience when they're on the debt free journey is what he calls as time fatigue. And it just is you just don't have enough hours in a day to be able to complete all the things to set you up so that you feel good about what you're doing financially. And I'm super grateful because getting paid once a month 
significantly reduced my time fatigue because I didn't realize how emotionally taxing it was to think about getting paid bi-weekly and think about making sure that I was putting my money in the right place this first week because of how dependent it was on the second week and just like that that the, just the tag excuse me just the task of tracking it bi-weekly was something that was contributing to the time fatigue. And if you think about it in a relationship, if you get paid bi-weekly, it's two people that are examining the bi-weekly paycheck. And although it may be stressful, the numbers, you still have somebody physically present to bounce that off with and, and to talk about it with and to think, think it through with versus if you're just doing it by yourself. Paying myself once a month completely eliminated that because so long as I'm not behind on any of my bills and I'm always paying a month in advance, it doesn't matter. I can get paid on the 1st, I can get paid on the 25th. I'll always be able to cover all of my expenses because everything is just paid out of that one. Um, everything is just paid out of that day. And I will say this, I mentioned this in the budget video that I'm not at the point where the day I get paid, I subtract all my expenses. I do subtract my expenses over like a three to five day period just because it's so much money going out in one day that it's a lot but it's still overall psychologically is better to just have that one pay period to try to manage. So that has that like worked very very well. What didn't work this month is not planning for financially planning for my friend's visit and you guys We'll see that in my budget. Uh, one of my really close friends came to visit and I just, I am not for sure what I was thinking about um, this visit and how it was going to go, but I just don't think that I planned very well for it in general. And because I didn't plan very well for it in general, um, I did spend money that I wasn't expecting to spend, if you will. And I just think that I could have just planned better um, overall for both the experience side that you know my friend had with me and then the side of like me financially and where I'm going and making sure I'm in alignment with my goals so two, one thing that I need to start doing is well and it's really just a continuation from last month is I need to continue to refine my business systems I'm doing really really well with that and that feels amazing best thing in all the land business systems okay best thing ever um but just continuing to refine them you know I have another 30 days and so there's uh, tweaks that I can implement this month because again the better my business systems are the easier it is for me to generate income because the easier it is for people to pay me this is a bit of a like psychological philosophical thing I really just need to stop playing small and this is something that I realized one in just the amount of income that I was able to make this month right like I my income was very awesome this month and this is income that I've made on a part-time basis which makes it even more super fantastic and amazing um but I realized that there's still this element of like me playing small not as it relates to the number of hours that I'm working because the number of hours that I'm working that that's just set it's based off of where I'm at right now my life goals what I'm choosing to prioritize but there's still an element of me playing small even inside of the business that I'm building that is doing very well and so one of the things that I need to stop doing in the coming month is playing small and I think that if I stop doing that, I'll allow myself to earn even more, which will allow me to be able to pay more debt. So that's a big thing that I need to stop doing. My intention for the month, the coming month in November, is to focus on my debt snowball. Why is this intention important? This intention, I actually wrote it down. This intention is important because I'm on a journey to become debt free. I'm, I invested 12 months in building extraordinary habits that will carry me to the success that I deserve and desire. And now it's time to actually put all of that into action. And what I mean by that is that like this is the this coming month is the first month of the second year that I'll be on this journey. And if if I don't shift to focusing on my debt, right, my first year was restore my financial dignity um you know i had very specific goals inside of the dave ramsey plan always the plan was to pay on debt but it wasn't the priority because i was coming from a very um 
you know, I wasn't coming from a situation where I was even employed when I started the journey. You know, when I started the journey, I wasn't employed. I, I, my company wasn't running. And so my priority for that first year was really restoring my financial dignity and getting to the point where I could stand up and pay my own expenses and, and take care of those things. In addition to that, I knew that I was building the habit and the muscle for things that would carry me into the second year. And I think now that this is the beginning of the second year, I just need to... I need to lean into focusing on the debt so that that way I can achieve this goal that I set for myself. And that's something that you would have seen if you watched the budget with me live video that even when I did my budget, normally when I would do my budget, I would do my four walls and then I would come around and do my lifestyle and then I would do my debt. When I did the budget this month, I didn't do it that way. I did my four walls, I did my debt, and then I came back around and did my lifestyle. And lifestyle is just like lifestyle personal slash wants. And it's because moving forward, I just want the entire focus to be on demolishing this debt. It was always the general objective, but because I had so many other things that needed to get taken care of in order for me to make any traction on that, it's like I've had 12 months to build an absolutely phenomenal foundation of which to be able to really attack um, this debt. And I just want to focus on that for the next month. So that is my review. Now I'm going to throw you over my shoulder and we're going to take a look at these numbers. Okay, so we are looking at the October 2018 budget. And if you see here at the top, it shows that it is an every dollar budget. It shows that it is an every dollar budget and that is one because I took the original budget plan of $1,800 and populated the form but two as I begun to receive gifts throughout the month I did put them in the plan category and I made a plan for those as well so as we go into the budget you'll be able to see where I allocated the additional funds. Coming down to income, the salary that I earned for October was $1,800. Then I received $669 in gifts for the month of October, which is really amazing. Again, I deeply appreciate you guys for supporting my work. I love that you are enjoying the content that I'm producing and I love hearing all the stories about how it's serving you and I appreciate that so many of you all want to contribute to not just my journey to become debt free but contribute to um, me being able to continue to produce content at this level so $669 here and so that would make my total income $2,469 for the month of October. If you come down to my giving, my tithe, my child support commission, and iTunes, it is I planned on 180, I spent 180. The only reason why that is accurate is because before I pushed send, I came into my account, I looked at the number, and I said, What number did you write here? Because that's all you're sending, no matter what. That's all you're sending. And so I finally got this number right. You guys know that this has been wrong for like the last two or three months. So I'm grateful that those numbers came out right. If we come down to my savings, you will see that I did not plan to add any money to my emergency fund for um, October. And that is because I took the leftover money from last month and put it towards my emergency fund. And that allowed me to bring my emergency fund up to the thousand dollars. So I'm super grateful to be moving into the second year of me being on the Dave Ramsey plan with a fully funded emergency fund. Second to that, I also decided to take some of the gifted money that was sent to me from subscribers and begin to fund my sinking fund for health care. And so you guys know that I'll be initiating um, medical coverage in November. And I'm familiar enough with my medical coverage plan to sort of understand the some of the basics about it. And I do understand that there are going to be some costs that I incur. And for that reason, I want to be proactive and I want to create a sinking fund to be able to offset some of those costs when they come up. And uh, one of the ways that I want you guys to see this sinking fund is it's not necessarily saving just in case I get sick. It's more so like I know that every year I have an annual exam period. That's going to happen whether I'm sick or well. I want to put this money in this savings so when that date comes, I can just cash flow it. And thankfully, um, because of your generosity, I was able to bring that to $500. So that's very nice as well. 
coming down to housing i paid my rent of 845 dollars my electricity of 25 dollars my gas of 25 dollars my cell phone bill of 35 dollars and 82 cents and then my second gas which i explained to you guys i can't put that on a budget because it's just the average of what the entire complex uses divided by my square footage or something to that effect so of the 25 that i had planned it was it came out to $18.57 so I'm grateful that planning for 25 keeps me within budget to where I'm not needing to put more in that category so that is really nice for groceries I wanted to actually um, spread this open so that you guys can see it so the 3219 I believe if you guys remember my grocery haul I feel like that was from Whole Foods 1051 was from High Park Produce and then 345 was from um, me going to Walmart to pick up more water. This 2827, you see it's labeled eating out. Now, I don't think that it's actually fair to put this under groceries because it's clearly not groceries. It's eating out. And this is what I mean when I say my friend came to visit and I didn't really plan very well. Um, she was in town and I don't have any excuse for it. I wanted to go out to eat with her. Thankfully, right, I was able to stick within my food budget of $75 because instead of spending the additional $25 on more groceries, I just took that additional sort of $25 or $25 slash $30 and put it towards that. But that is not a good practice, right? Like if I'm going to eat out, I need to have an eating out budget. Or if a friend is going to visit, I need to have a friend is visiting budget. I can't just stick it under another category so that I feel good on the inside because I get that it's all food and you guys are probably going to be like it's okay but it's not a good practice to have however am I happy that I did not you know throw caution to a wind to the wind and just like spin like crazy absolutely freaking lootly but still the 28 27 should have been a separate category that I acknowledged that I was going to spin for my friend or while my friend was here. So say all that to say of the $75 in groceries, you see me using the air quotes, I spent $74.42. Okay, so the next thing that I have is my transportation budget, which I planned 50 and I spent $38.92. That's really nice. A lot of people have asked, what do I do with that additional money that I don't spend when I'm budgeting? At this time, I'm just leaving it in my checking account just to give my checking account a healthier floor. Um, I don't want to bring my checking account down to zero. It really wasn't a good practice before when I was working, but I especially can feel that now that I am solely relying on my entrepreneurial income. And so I just leave it on the floor and then just continue to budget over it. I think maybe when it gets to like a threshold of like, I don't know, a 500 or something like that, I'll take it down to 250 or 200 I'm not for sure but as it stands right now I'm just leaving it on the floor to just build up the floor of my checking account so um it's really nice to be under budget there my renter's insurance of 575 came out life insurance of 1044 came out um and then if you come down I have therapy I went to therapy twice that's 140 which I'm just I love my therapist she's awesome um clothing you guys saw me do the clothing haul um i spent fifty dollars on clothing and then pocket money is ten dollars i gave myself a budget of ten dollars and spent ten dollars didn't need to do personal hygiene or household pantry however i did need to do laundry and um that was because i did thrift a few things and i think Maybe in the past, I, the last few months, I wasn't doing laundry because I really was just kind of hanging out in loungewear all day, every day, not healthy. Um, but I, I mentioned that to you guys, how I was sort of slacking a little bit there, but slack no more. So laundry came out to um, $33.79 for the total cost there, which is pretty high. I don't anticipate it being that high again in the coming months. I would like to keep my laundry budget to about under $10 a month if I can. But I do think that when I'm buying a large amount from a thrift store that I just need to be willing to you know do the whole thing the other thing and you guys saw this in one of my videos is I purchased a couch I'm super excited about this couch um I was just browsing I've been browsing on Craigslist 
in general just for things and typically when I browse I, I'll see stuff that I like but I'm just like you know if I don't have the money for it I that one just isn't for me and it just so happened to be that I had the money for this in my account at the time and so if you come over here you see that the well you probably can't see but the 6180 was what I actually spent on the couch it was $60 but because of the transfer fee it was $1.80 for the transfer fee and then the 6545 was the fee that I had to bring it here to the house which I know that that sounds like a lot but it's really not like I did this task rabbit where you can literally hire a handyman to do anything for you which is super awesome because how far the handyman had to drive to bring the couch to my house it was just it was one of those moments where I just was like hmm it's really not as hard as you think to get the stuff that you want in your home because you could just hire people to do that so I'm very very grateful that total cost to get to for to to find my couch and actually get it here to the house and it's in great condition I'll do another video where I share more about it um, but total cost was hundred and twenty seven dollars and twenty five cents which I'm super stoked about that because that it's an amazing couch it's in great condition and um, you know it's helping me to bring my home together so that was also something unexpected that um, I then pulled out of the additional funds that I was given via gifts PayPal, you guys know that this balance has been paid off as of last month. My medical bill is new. It's not new, but it was new to being listed. And so um, my medical bill payments, I set up this month for $25 a month. It, we didn't start it this month. It was to be initiated next month, if that makes sense. I had the conversation this month to be initiated next month. But if you guys would have seen my post, you know that originally this was like $1,333.70. But I called and got it knocked down to $914.55. So I'm super excited about that because I'll be paying that off next month. So exciting. City Girl, this was a wonderful thing as well because I had additional um, funds in my account. I was able to put a little bit more towards City Girl. I put $142.99. That was the original payment that I said that I was going to make. Then I put $43.45 and then $138 additional to city girl which was just super awesome to be able to put what was the total three hundred and twenty four dollars and forty four cents towards city girl this month it was a very very awesome feeling the irs i just wanted to pull this down so you guys can see my irs balance it's six thousand nine hundred thirty nine dollars and forty nine cents and again i have made mention that you know i used to make up a, a lot of money and i was not practicing good tax habits and so that's why my tax bill is so high I'm grateful that that's set up on a payment plan of $25 a month obviously that's the minimum I'm gonna pay well over that to get that taken care of but I'm grateful to be out of the stages of where that number is needing to be calculated and to have a final number the BCD debt uh, that's the $5,000 business debt that I have doesn't occur interest that minimum is going to be $25 a month spoke with the creditor they're totally fine with me beginning payment on that at the top of 2018 my consolidated student loan balance is $71,086.21 that's not counting the interest from last month so actually what it will be is $72,086 well no 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 I guess that thousand is split between the two so I don't know how to calculate the separate interest for these two but just know that this it's not including interest so even though this is 71,000 right now it is actually more because every month basically my student loans gain an extra thousand dollars in interest which is one of the reasons why I want to continue to refine my business systems so that that way every month in addition to whatever payment I'm making I'm also paying that thousand dollar interest payment so that that way my balance doesn't keep growing then I have my my larger student loan of one hundred and nine thousand eight hundred eighty two dollars and eighty two cents so that is my overall um budget so many people ask me why my debt is not going down and the main reason why it's not going down is because it gains a thousand dollars worth of interest a month so if we just take the last 12 months from when i started talking about my numbers and i said oh my number is two hundred and eight thousand right 208,000 then there was about 18,000 that was forgiven right that bumped me down to 84 8500 let me let me not make numbers up let me just let 
that bumped me down to about 190, right? So 190 plus 12 times a thousand is adding back $12,000 to my debt. So am I in the same position that I was in at the top of the first year paying off this debt? Yes. And the reason why I'm in the same position is because while my income was not enough for me to tackle this debt aggressively, I was gaining interest. And while I'm gaining interest at the rate that I'm gaining it, it's going to be it's going to feel like it's in this impossible feat because bare minimum until I get my balances down, I need to be putting 12,000 plus on my just my student loans to take care of everything. Does that make sense? I'm hoping that that makes sense. So people are like, why is it the same number? Why is it the same number? It's the same number because every single month it goes up. Now, thankfully, I've built some amazing habits during my first year. My income is growing and I am looking forward to seeing this number slowly but surely go down. I'm feeling very confident going into my first month of the second year, putting $2,000 towards my debt. I'm hoping to see that number increase each and every single month. So there are some fun facts about my income, debt, and overall um, expenses and how they were paid this month. If I was going to give myself a grade this month, I would give myself an A. This will be my first A that I ever received. And I'm getting an A for income, not necessarily because of the gifts, but because I planned $1,800 and I received $1,800. If you go back through all of my budget report cards, I'm a couple hundred dollars off nearly every single month. I am happy that exactly what I said I was going to get this month is what I got. And then I'm also getting an A because exactly what I said I was going to spend, that is what I spent with the exception of, you know, being under in like transportation, but then also um, being a little generous with the language of groceries where I took that almost $30 that I spent eating out and stuck it under there. I'm still maintaining my budgets. And so for that reason, it's also an A. Um, it's also an A because one of my intentions my intention for last month going into this month was to refine my business system so that I can earn more money. I did that this month. So even though that's not reflected in this month's budget report card, income earned in this month is reflected, um, is, is just something that I'm considering. Um, also, I think that I did a really good job budgeting the gifts that I was given rather than feeling scared to spend it or, um, being confused as to where it should go. I think I did a really good job coming into my budget and saying, okay, what are the things that I want and need to take care of? So I met my intention. My income was accurate. I was under budget or exactly on budget for everything that I said. And for that reason, I get my first A. 12 months. It took me to get an A. <laughs> but I got it <laughs> and also I probably even am just boosting it up a little bit because I finally got to the point of being able to list out all of my debts which is also it's you know it took me a long time to get here and I wish I could say that you know it took that long because my numbers were so complicated it's like no my numbers were not complicated but I mentioned this in nearly every video money is emotional and blind spots are real and your financial blueprint is real it limits you in so many ways because a lot of you may be looking at this and you're like yeah I saw this six months ago Stacy and it's just like that's wonderful that you saw it six months ago I felt it six months ago and we both know watching someone go through something difficult is way easier than being the person going through something difficult so it took me longer to see what you were seeing because I was actually feeling it and going through all of it the celebration is that now we all see the same thing that's 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 the thing that's amazing. That's the thing that's awesome. Not only do we all see the same thing, we are also now about to see me make track more more progress and real traction on my debt payments. And I cannot emphasize enough how how challenging and difficult it would have been to do any of this stuff had it not been for each and every single one of you guys who watch these videos who comment who like who give me your perspective on money whether we agree or disagree all of that input served me in so many ways and i just i don't know how to thank you guys enough for 
caring enough or maybe you know in the, taking the time out to comment or write right like I can't thank you enough for doing it because your disagreement your agreement your encouragement your discouragement your frustration your awareness my lack all of that stuff mushed around together is one of the key ingredients to me being in this position one year post not one year post but one year um, after starting this journey you know I started this journey with no income and now I'm here and this feels amazing and it feels incredible and I'm super super excited and super honored that so many of you guys have signed up to see me complete this journey so until next time I'll talk to you all very soon bye